Hey everyone, it's McLaud. Today I'm playing Cosmo, but I'm not playing the Cosmo that you might know. I'm playing a very tight 20 cards, no extra deck Cosmo deck. I originally got the idea from Chivalrous on uh, Dwelling Smeta, who shared a list very similar to this one and uh, wrote a really interesting write up. I'm gonna uh, put a picture of it now and put a link to their deck in the description of the video. If I, if I remember to do it, editing my uh remember to do that. And the, the basic crux of this deck is you're using so many card draw cards uh, in order to access the very few back row that you have, but more importantly, to get to a pilot and a ship so that you can d dunk your opponent because uh, Cosmic Dark Destroyer is a real card that's um, really tough for many decks to deal with. In terms of draw power, we are playing Enka Mufright. I think this is the first time I've actually pronounced this card's name out loud. Uh, I hope I did a good job at it, uh, which can basically set uh, itself in a scale, pop itself to draw you a card, and then you can maybe uh, pen summon it, sort of, well, special it from the extra deck, uh, if you need a bunny or tribute fodder for, like, a Dark Lady or Slip Rider. It's a pretty good card, I'm only playing two of it, the original Chivalrous list was playing three, I think two is more than fine. As a limit one of choice, we're playing Allure of Darkness instead of Emergency Teleport. The idea is this uh, banishes a card that you can easily get back with Cosmo Town, and then this draws you like two cards that you probably need. Cosmo Town is like pretty the 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 the, the glue that holds the deck together. This it is an insane card. It does three things. First of all, it returns banished Cosmo cards, uh, Cosmo monsters rather. To your hand from the banish pile, like if, 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 if it got banished uh, by a lure, or if it like is a pilot that floated, or a ship that floated, you can, you can just get it back. So basically, pretty much never run out of the resources. <laughs> it's it, it, just this part is insane. But then it also allows you to shuffle your hand, sort of, in order to get rid of bricks, like say you open too many pilots and no ships, or the other way around, which is pretty cool. And it floats. On destruction, which uh, you you can destroy your own Cosmo Town with Slip Rider. I'm sure this is going to come up a, a little bit, uh, but more importantly, none of these effects are once per turn. Well, they're soft once per turn, but meaning that if you draw both Cosmo Towns, you can can use them both, which is a bit insane. And then you know uh, the rest of the decks we're playing six, uh, seven dark targets for a lot of darkness, which I think is enough. Playing IDB because this is a card that wins game on its own, and we're not uh, playing three cards more town, only two. Because two, two is enough in a 20 card list, two is more than enough. Playing cards mojo because it's basically uh, a better IDB for, for the deck. <laughs> I mean, it banishes without targeting, and that's what IDP does, but this one also allows your ships to float, so. Pretty, pretty, pretty good deck, and uh, last but not least, uh, the very spicy thing about this list that it is running steel teams at a scale because you can trigger it turn one thanks to Cosmo Wicked Witch, uh, which you have many ways of accessing thanks to all the draw power that you have. So all in all, it's a it's a pretty good list. I think it's really cool. I think it's not too expensive to build. Like I'm playing two tin cans because I have two tin cans. Uh, I'm not playing traditional Cosmo list because I only have two tin cans. But you can like sub. Uh, this thing can for another back row or a third and come of right and the original list uh, Chivalrous was playing a Cosmo good witch, which I don't think is a really good card Which is why I, I, I'm not I'm not playing it uh, And I, I think someone else also cogged uh, with a very similar deck and they were playing like I think I were playing IDP actually, but this is a very like budget ish deck. What do you think? Anyway, uh, I think this deck is gonna be a good matchup against Top tier threats, maybe not that much against uh, Nias because you do rely on these cards specifically to remove Clogger and the Nias Wiseman from the field. But against Constella, this should be easy peasy. Let's take this to ladder, I guess. What the heck would my Valentine be on? I'm not playing against RPs in 2024, am I? Going second, uh, that's fine. You have so many ways to play around disruption uh, with this deck, just because all of your cards float. Oh, Aura Mages, okay. I, I don't even know if I'm going to put this part of the video, because this is going to be a stomp, obviously. Um, this is probably the, 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 the easiest deck you could be facing. 
My one issue is I have all of these pilots and no ships. I wanna go farm girl. Kill this. I forgot what the arrow mages uh, cards do, but I can probably float into Dark Lady or Wicked Witch. I'm gonna try that. Not the greatest opener. Great to battle it is. Ah! I don't think there's anything too concerning uh, about this deck, but I did forget what every arrow mage card does, so. It's been a while since I play against this deck. It's not a good deck, it was never good, but. I hope it sure is taking their time thinking about what they want to do with that deck that doesn't do anything. That's our mages. The win condition of the deck is wasting your time. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win with a timer. It's gonna be a timer win. This is gonna make it for a very boring video, but this is gonna be like an easy timer win. Uh, why don't I? Uh, why don't I show you some stuff? They have lying around, yeah, like this. Look at this. I should have some camera glare because I've sleeved it. It's a magic card that is worth fifty dollars, and I pulled it in a random booster pack because this card is like part of a list of cards that is somewhat, somewhat, somehow, sometimes reprinted in, in sets that is nothing. It's not like like the standard set list, you know, but they just put cards. Uh, that thematically kind of coincide with the set and also uh, sometimes are very expensive and this one's like 50 bucks because it's very popular in the most popular formats and it's played in like no other format because it's not legal in any other format. Is it not legal? I'm gonna check this out actually. Yeah, it's not legal in Modern, it's not legal in Pioneer, it's not in Arena. Not that you would even be buying it on Arena. But it got a total of two printings. First one going for 75 bucks, and I think this one on Card Market is like I put it at 50, and I'm sure I'm gonna find someone to, to buy it at 50. Oh, there we go. There, the game's over. Was that a fun game, everyone? Arrow Mages! Alright, first game for real this time. It's gonna be against Synchrons, my favorite deck of all time. Wow. How'd I do that? Oh, cool. I'm going first. Maybe I'll, I'll get to, uh, Showcase some cool shit. What I can do is the um Steel Tombstone one. Explode into Dark Destroyer. Yeah, I think it's a pretty decent hand actually. I haven't showcased the deck's um insane draw power yet. There we go. And there right up, uh Chivalrous explained that Cosmojo doesn't work too well with uh Seal Tombs, because Seal Tombs also prevents you from banishing cards. And hopefully, well, obviously, if uh, you're gonna use a, a Cars Mojo to pop one of your ships, it's not gonna be able to float. So. Uh, but they're not gonna be able to special from the graveyard, but they're gonna be able to get back from the grave, right? I think the special, yeah, it does special from the grave. Oh no! What is it? Your Synchron Explorer does nothing? Huh? Did it unread my skill? I didn't read my skill, did you? Read, jeez. This is what I hate about this deck. It's like, it, it's a it's a very linear combo deck, which means you learn the combo and then your brain is just on autopilot. There's, there's very little decision making compared to a deck like uh, Earth Machines, which I've been trying to learn lately. Or even a deck like Ten Yi. Like obviously with Ten Yi, there's plays that are better than others and that you should aim for going first, second, but it's not fixed in stone, it really depends on your opening end, and your opening end is not like a set thing, it's a variable. It's not like you're playing six tutors just to get to the Jack Synchron that you're gonna pitch for the scale. And easy win, easiest win of all time. Deal teams, everyone. Alright, will this be a real game? Only time will tell. Going first again. I hope I get to showcase some of the cooler stuff this deck can play. Oh, BLS. Well, this loses to Seal Tombs. Um, but is this a Seal Tombs kind of hand? I think it's a Tin Can Pass kind of hand. I think Tin Can's set to pass is going to be enough this game. Especially considering... Well, it doesn't really matter against BLS, but... The two sets uh, do not target or anything. 
So I think I want to get Dark Destroyer. Wicked... No, not Wicked Witch. Probably Forerunner. And a third ship. Because uh, no matter what I do, I'm just going to float into it. And uh, pop it with Kurt's Mojo. But if I get Dark Destroyer, it's really cool. The one thing this deck doesn't have is a way to recur your cards from the grave. So I, I am playing only one copy of Forerunner. I have now lost the Forerunner forever. This is fine, but... Uh, get a bit annoying sometimes. That's fun. Oh, oh. Wait, this banishes any card in the grave. Interesting. Um, they're pointing stealing their light? I think so. I think it's funny if I do that. It's not like I have a choice anyway, I'm gonna do that. The thing is, it's got major targets, so if they have a second one... It's bad for me. But I could Cosmojo get rid of their back row. Which puts them on top deck envoy mode. Which is a bet that I'm not willing to make just yet. Oh, okay. Alright. I'm gonna try again for the Dark Destroyer. Wicked Witch and I guess Farmer Girl. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get too much out of this farm girl. So, just pick one. It's random, right? Hey, it is. Your opponent randomly picks one. The game should just auto-pick for you. Why does the why does the opponent have to pick? That's not the, the only color that does this. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted. Now we can Dark Destroyer. Pop their mystery set. And save the Cosmojo for later. It's the evening twilight night. Okay. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Uh, I'm going to do a little cute trick. A little cute trick is called... Paying just a thousand to get back the tin can. Normal tin can. Float the tin can into a slip rider. And slip rider is going to pop my Chaos Mode Town, which is going to get me. I don't know, actually. Hmm. Another Chaos Mode Town. Which I can then activate. Paying another Hondo to get back my tin can. Is that something I'd rather have in hand than Tin Can? I don't think there's a point in, in shuffling anything, so... Uh, let's go for Broke. They have a Kytroide. Okay. Uh, this is fine. Is it fine? Oh, this is fine. I can destroy my Dark Destroyer. Banish the... Where is it? There he is. The Kytroid. And then... Um, hoping that they don't have a second Kai Trade or else I'm going to look silly. Just in case, I'm going to get the Dark Lady. Dark Lady attacks. No shot, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? This is still lethal, but come on. Therein was Kite, Kite, Evening, Twilight, Night, Cosmic Cyclone, and an Unknown Fifth. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Now they can banish the Kytroid. Uh, it's fine. Because... I still have another Dark Destroyer. Uh, Dark Destroyer is going to pop my Slip Rider. Slip Rider is going to float into Wicked Witch, and that's two additional attacks. So I didn't even need to activate the Dark Lady, but it was funny if I did. Just in case, like, the last card of the Karibu or something. Jeez. Alright. Uh, fun game. Alright. I have no idea what this could be. Nobody's playing Water Exes in 2024. Oh, maybe they are, actually. The thing is, Abyssal does stop the floats from uh, the Cosmos ships. Which isn't that big of an issue. God damn it, it is Water Exes. It's fine. It's completely fine. It's not... Uh, all they do is um, make Dweller, and I can definitely deal with that. 
I did open Enka Mothrite, which is pretty based. Pretty cool. Pretty happy about that. Diva, get the Heavy Atlantean. And then they make Marinces, Coral Animal, and then you revive the Heavy Infantry. And then uh, you get an extra normal that you use on, on, on. I don't know. I don't know what you use it on, actually. Boy. I haven't seen enough of this deck yet. Oh, they just. Uh, they're not gonna get another normal going on? Okay, they're going for Dweller. Didn't use the extra normal. One back row. Two back row. That could be an issue. It's not an issue anymore. I opened the best card in the game. I think I try and bait. It's not like it really matters, but... Although... Wait, I need to check something. This does target, okay. So many cards in the game that target. And Cardboard don't, don't really care about any of them. They don't really care about ITP either, unless you tin can. At which point it's your fault. <laughs> uh, they're not gonna stop me here. Tin can... I can save my straw man. I think I can bait with tin can. Uh, yeah, I think this is better. Try and try and bait something they could have. Exceeds import. It's also targets. So I guess I'm going to have to dark destroyer now. Isn't it fun how you can just dodge removal? Just be like, yeah, cool card. I don't care. I think I go for the shield wipe here. Destroying. If I pop this, this loses 500 attack. Pop the dweller. Uh, they can detach, but nothing is is great here for them because dark destroyer can be targeted. So it's a mandatory effect. It's still gonna apply and resolve, but uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, I can still. Enka Muff right here, but I, I, I don't think that's necessary. Well, I can lethal, and they could uh, very easily have a crackdown or something that they could use against me, so... Uh, I'm just gonna go for, for the easy one. A huge, very important part of Duel Links and Yu-Gi-Oh! and card games in general is you never want to overextend when you have the advantage, because uh, this can easily turn against you. Like, right now, I'm just gonna... Summon my straw man. I don't activate anything here. Interesting. Straw man is going to get me back the tin can. And I don't think they have anything to threaten lethal. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. See what happens. Oh, okay. They just died. <laughs> Easiest games of my life. Jeez. This deck is so good. Well, I haven't really play against anything close to, to metal relevant, but this deck is so good. <laughs> I didn't really get to play against anything meta, which is a shame because I really wanted to showcase how good this deck uh, would perform against. I, was, I had very specifically in mind uh, stuff like Constellar and Tenny because I think Dark Destroyer trades very favorably with like Ashtana or something. But that did not happen. I did get to showcase what the deck could do, like turn one seal tombs. Uh, using a Pride for card draw and cool little tricks with Cosmo Town and Dark Destroyer. I don't know, like, obviously these games were stomps because this deck is, is pretty good, but do you think this game is really good? Do you think, like, these would have been close if I played against Meta decks? I'm definitely gonna play more of this deck, uh, get out of plat with it. That's the thing, I haven't been playing much Duel Links lately, so I'll get out of plat. You know what? get to legend, find better opponents, and maybe stream the whole thing and get to cog with it because this is genuinely a very sick list. And if you're looking for a way to play Cosmo that's not too expensive, uh, I, I can't recommend this deck enough. Like, the if you're, if you're like on a budget, the one thing I'd recommend is like Third and Camera Fright or another Cosmo pilot uh, that's not the UR tin can. Actually, there's a... Uh, Dark Cosmo Pilot, yeah. Thor Troopers the Dark, so that would be another target for Allure, and it can sometimes reborn a uh, Psychic, which does include stuff like Dark Lady, which is 
decent. And uh, what else did that to say? Don't play Dark Eclipse. Not a fan of this guy. It's like another big body, but all it does is like it doesn't float on destruction like the other Cosmos do. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the deck as much as I do. Let me know what decks you'd like to see next. Because uh, I finally got my third Rishal Wendy. I'm going to play a little bit of these. Two ships. I'm still considering. I haven't pulled a second. Uh, Shari Red, I think, is the super rare one. Earth Machines, I'm currently learning. And all these, all of these other decks. So thank you for watching once again. Let me know what you want to see next. And I'll see you guys and gals in non-binary pals next time.